Welcome to another YouTube video tutorial by Robert Chalmers. That's me. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, if you haven't done so already, that would be very nice. It helps me to see that people appreciate my work enough to subscribe. Share the love. So now we'll look at how to convert an InDesign document to an Affinity Publisher document. Why would you want to do this? Well, there are thousands of InDesign documents already scattered around the internet. I'm sure there's one that's almost, if not exactly, what you're looking for. Now, before we go too much further, I must add a caveat. The files I'm converting here are the InDesign file type IDML. The files of type INDD can't at this stage be opened by Affinity Publisher. There is a conversion program available on the internet that works well for that, but it's kind of expensive. So I'm living without it. It's also possible to use documents saved as PDF files by InDesign, but I'm not looking at them in this tutorial. So where do we find free InDesign templates? There are surprisingly few places where free versions are available for download. So we need to start with templates and how to convert them to Affinity Publisher. I found a really good assortment on HubSpot. Now these are ebook templates. I'm not interested in the other ones at the moment, just ebooks. You'll see it when you go searching. It's on all the search engines. 18 free downloadable templates and they're all from HubSpot eventually. You have to subscribe to HubSpot, which is a bit of a nuisance but it only takes a moment and you don't have to pay any money, so that's not a real issue. Let's see what I found and what I've downloaded over the last months. Now on here you can see that I'm on HubSpot, officehubspot.com. Now I've signed in and I can download the files, which I've done. I'll bring up, there we go, there's ebook template 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. These are the only ones I've downloaded at the moment. There's quite a lot, but I'm after these ebook template ones. And there you go, there's, there's Grow Traffic pointing you at HubSpots again. Free templates, and that's growtraffic.com. Five free ebook templates from HubSpot. And you can see there for yourself, they're worth a look. And you can download all these. Now, free InDesign templates. You can actually go to bestindesigntemplates.com. There's a lot of free templates there. There's a lot of paid templates. Um, lots of different types. Cards, political newsletters, creative InDesign resumes. These are not necessarily ebooks. I'm sure they're in there, but they're not without looking through it. Now there's A5 book templates, uh, Adobe InDesign, creative, digital and print layouts. There's all sorts of things, A5 book templates, InDesign. You can download those. Some you can, some you do them online. Um, free InDesign, 82 InDesign files to download. Best InDesign templates. That's worth a look. And... One of the big ones, unlimited InDesign templates, almost unlimited. There are thousands from Envato Elements, but they're not necessarily, as I said, ebooks, which is what I was looking for. But they are InDesign templates. Now, let me just close that for a moment or, or minimize it because we don't really need it at the moment. I've showed you where to get them. Now what I've ended up with is ebook templates. And what we're going to do, I don't want to spend too long on it. Um, now there's a bunch of Adobe templates, free templates that I've downloaded. Now let me show you here. See that one? That's an INDT file. That one will not open in Affinity of any sort. There is a program on the internet, as I mentioned, that will convert that to a suitable Affinity Publisher file. But it's reasonably expensive. And I'm sure you'll find it if you go looking for it. However, what we do have, let's have a look in here. 
there's a PDF file. You can open PDF files in in um, Affinity Publisher, but they're not really they're difficult to work with. Let's find one in here. Children's book cover, Illustrator. No, there's one that will open in Affinity Designer. You can see the little blue thing there because that's an AI book. We're not going into that at the moment. Let's look at children's book templates. There's an IDML type file. You can see there's Affinity Publisher just there. There's also a PDF version of it. So there are lots and lots and lots of um, templates that you can use. Let's minimize that because we've got to get right on to doing what we want to do. Now you can see here that's ebook template 1 IDML and it just opens up like that and you can see that's very nice. Everything's there almost. Now how do we find out if everything's there? And I'll show you this in other options at the <clears throat> in a moment. We go up to documents and resource manager. Now one of the things you've got to be careful of here, there is an image there, image TIFF, missing. We're in resource manager, documents, resource manager and this pops up with your IDML document open and you think how do I find the missing document? Well it's an image file. What we can do is highlight that and locate it in the document. And there it is down there. You can see down the bottom left hand corner it's in highlight and it's missing. But that's where it goes. Now it's a 300 dpi image and it's in the master page. That's up here. Top left master page. I should put my little pointer on so it's a bit easier to follow where I am. And it's size, a width of one and a bit inches and 0.213 of an inch height. So it's not very big. And it's in a master page, which means it's going to appear, if there's actually anything there, it's going to appear on every page. So what can you do? You can actually put that in there because it's missing. It's not even in. I've already looked for this, so I can tell you. This is ebook template one, ebook template one folder, and you can see that there is no file in there with that name. None at all. Okay, we'll go back to that. There's nothing called image tiff. Now oddly enough they're embedded so it doesn't create confusion on the disk because if you've got one, two, three, four, five, six images all called image.tiff and they're all different images they're going to conflict aren't they? Now this one's embedded. Let's have a look at that one located in the document and there it is there. See? Down the bottom that looks like a Twitter icon. It's on page 2, it's embedded, and it's 555 dpi. There are all sorts of strange dpi's there, but never mind. That's But it's called image tiff. Not to be confused with locate in document. That's in document 2. And where is it? That's also image.tiff, picture of a young girl. 555 dpi. Image on page one, image TIFF, locate in document, and you can see it flicks to page one. Now, there it is up there, company logo. So if you were going to use these, I would strongly suggest that you rename those files before you continue, because you've got, if they're embedded, it doesn't matter but you can't work on them in that case. Now let's have a look at Annie Spratt. That's a linked file.
and it shows you there there it is there original size 72 dpi the placed size that's how big it is in place 8.8 .8 by 13.193 it's an rgb which is fine these don't have to be cmyk because they're ebook templates and ebooks generally don't get printed out so you don't need to worry about it they're linked they're linked they're linked they're all linked files now what's the problem here with them being linked files should have done that in the first place instead of messing about too much on the disk and it gets lost let's open this and see what happens now it doesn't warn me about there being missing resources but there is there we go missing resources some of your linked resource files are missing would you like to locate them that's because they're linked let me show you the resource manager let's find that one it's a linked file users robert library mobile documents clouds downloads ebook templates and it can't find it that's because it's linked now if you were to send that document that IDML document just send it off to the printers or send it to your friend all of those images are going to be lost because they won't be with the document now let's close that I think I've emphasized that enough that's the copy we started with a blank here which we don't need now ebook template one let's go to resource manager and have a look see all those images are linked now what you can do with that locate here's how you convert it if they're embedded just ignore them for the time being but any sprat is a linked one we know where it is in the document locate the document and there's it there it's highlighted there you can see that and that's it there that's the image now we go to replace it we're in no we don't want that we want InDesign templates we don't want that one we want image folder and links now there's the links and we want any sprat remember so they're all unsplash images so they're royalty free just remember that any sprats on unsplash now open it and it's no longer missing go to Austin distal the next one replace in documents it's there now I've obviously done this before so it's remembering it but replace Austin distal there it is open now you can go along here you can see they're all there because I've done them before but what I want to do is embed them embed 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 and so on embed now all the documents in there are embedded except for that one which is missing so it won't embed because it's missing but you could put something there because there's its size 305 by 64 pixels when it's placed in size it's one inch by 0.2 inches so you could make your image and put it in the document locate in document it's in the master page and it's there so you could you can I mean if you like you can just put a little blank image there but if you want to clean that up that's how you do it now everything's embedded and you can find it close that down let's go up to documents 
and have a look at the font manager. How many fonts are used in this document? There's quite a few as it turns out. The Roboto, Noto Serif, that was the only one I actually had missing off this computer because I didn't have Noto Serif. Montserrat, Avenir, Arial Black and Ordinary Arial. And you can substitute or close out and add the fonts yourself. Now we've had a look at that one. Let's do that again, shall we? I'll just close that. Oops, let me do one more thing. Bring that up. There is the ebook template one that I've already saved. And there it is there. Page 7, page 1. That's what your AF pub looks like. Now here's something else that you may not be aware of. Over here, in all of these, it puts IDML in there. You can just highlight that and delete it. and work your way through your document and delete all those IDMLs. You don't really want them in there. Why would you want those in there? I ask you. I know it's a pain to have to delete them individually and there's probably a faster way of doing that but I haven't yet found what it is. A search and replace would be really handy on that kind of thing. But there you go. They're gone. Are they in here still? There's another there's another one. They don't cause any problems. They're just a constant reminder that okay, this was an InDesign document. Oh they're coming back because they're the top of the list. Oh, okay. IDML, get rid of that. Oh no, what's going on here? Oh, they're in the master. Okay, so don't worry about it. You've got to go up to the master. My fault, sorry. Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. Now they're all gone from the master. So when they pop up back here, as you can see, they're gone. Here was me trying to delete stuff in the master when I was in the layers of a page. And you can do that. Edit detached. You can edit detached from the master or you can edit length from the master. And edit frame content as a standard one. You can also lock that so you can't change it. But in this stage, I don't want to go into all that detail. Sufficient to say that there's our Affinity Publisher Master. And you can put what content you like in there now. There's your pages. There's your picture frames. There's your embedded document. Oh, there's another IDML in there. Let's get rid of that. Easy. So you can change all that file and save. Now that was ebook template one as a, an EPUB file. Let's close that down because we've done that one. Ebook template one IDML has been modified. Now I don't want to save it, just leave that as it is. Now ebook template two. is a similar type of thing but it's got a it's got a slightly different problem see that big question mark that appears on all of those pages <coughs> now why is that do you suppose that's because let's have a look at our document resource manager and what have we got appearing on page 8 Bench accounting. There's lots of 
things there from Unsplash. Missing, missing, missing. Now let's have a look at the folder. Remember this is ebook template number two. Let's go back one. Ebook template one we don't want. Ebook template two. Document fonts and links. Okay, now there's all our images that are actually stuck with question marks. So let's go back here and two I've already done. Clay banks we want. Locate in document. There's clay banks and that would have come up there where that question mark is. Locate in document. Clay banks. There's another question mark. Let's replace clay banks ah interesting am I in the right one here IDML2 clay banks unsplash it's missing altogether page 5 you can see clay banks unsplashed definitely missing Cancel that. Clay Banks one double five four double nine seven. Now, what I'm looking for on the right hand side is Okay, view, studio, assets, no, somewhere in here is Uh. stock that's what I want unsplash so what we want is to go to unsplash and look for clay banks Dash one five five four nine nine seven. Will that find it? Well, it's found lots of them. Nine nine seven. So we don't know which one of those it was, which is a bit of a pain. Certainly there. Ceramic piggy bank? No, that's no help. Clay banks? Perhaps it's that one. Isn't that strange that it doesn't give us... Let's see if we can just find the number. One five five four double nine seven. One five five four double nine seven. Doesn't appear to be there at all. Missing. Replace Michael Zakowski links missing as well I 
template one we don't want template two is where we are links clay banks my goodness me I was in the wrong folder after all that okay open that one clay banks uh, that one's missing what have I done wrong there Oh, I've got miles of them. One double five, four double nine seven. Replace four double nine seven. That's that one. Open. Takes a moment to do the job. I for ebony locate in document so that you know where it is replace it go looking for i for ebony now isn't it amazing how easy it is now i'm in the right directory too silly me nathan locate in document see the question marks yes nathan 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 open It eventually loads, just takes a moment. Patrick Tommaso. I don't know why I've got those there like that, but we'll find that out later. Locating document. Might be because I was wandering around on Unsplash. Let's get rid of that. Locating document. No, that's locating its position. Replace. Patrick Tommaso, Patrick Tommaso is that one there, open, and thought catalog, find in document, replace, thought catalog, there it is there, open, and there you have it. Okay, let's go back. Locate and document. We've got to put Blake Wiz in there. Replace Blake Wiz. Is it doing it? Yes, just takes a bit to do it, that's all. There he is. Now, bench accounting. Locate and document. Where the big question mark is. Replace. Bench accounting, it's the first one, obviously. These are all in order. Isn't that very neat? And there it goes. Now, that's missing. And there's not much I can do about that because I don't want to have to go and create a file 305 by 64. I've probably got one somewhere, but um, that's, a, that's a minor thing you can fix yourself. Now, those files are linked which means if you move this you're going to have all that trouble again so you can go there highlight them all and embed them and now they're all embedded so when you save the document they're always going to be there if you collect them by highlighting them there collection means it'll write them back to the hard drive to a folder where you're working so they're there if you want them so if you load a file that's got all them in you collect them and it will export them if you like back to a directory where you're working now that's all in there that's done let's close that one while we're there let's go to the font manager are all the fonts in there yep all the fonts are there so we can close that now this is called ebook template 2.idml file save as we don't want to be in links ebook template 2 folder I don't want to type idml just leave that blank 
and it will save it as ebook template 2.af pub. Save. Let's go to not to links. Ebook template 2 AF pub. Now you can delete all the rest, keep the links. Document fonts, you can see the fonts are there. If you want to install them, you can. Uh, and if they're missing, certainly. Now let's have a look at ebook template 3 before we finish this whole section. Let's close that. Ebook template 3, pages, there's our pages. Lots of question marks on here. Now, <coughs> excuse me, by having a look at that, and having a look at that, it's pretty easy to see that that image, a picture frame, that's that's almost that's a background image of some nondescript of some type. It's a background image for the page. See, there's one there, but it's still got the question mark behind it. So whatever's being used on that page as a background image is even in that one there. You can see there, the question mark is still behind it. So it's a full page size background layer. Let's have a look at document, resource manager, and they're all called image tiff. Wow, and they're all embedded. So you're going to have a real problem with that. Do you want them all image diff? If they're all the same background, that's fine. Because, let's have a look. 52.64 is the first one. No idea what size that is. Locate in document. Does it show us where it is? The original size is 791 by 1024. And it's as big as that page. And it's a linked file. Image TIFF. It's obviously a different size. 93 DPI. But all the following ones are all exactly the same size. Image TIFF. Locate in document. And there it is there. You can see. The big question mark. In that layer. Now that's not pixels, that's pickers, I believe. 51p by 66p. Some strange measurements in this document. And you can change the measurements, remember, by going up there to spread setup and document setup. Yes, the document units are in pickers. I'm not going to go through and change all that. That's a, that's a nightmare. If you want to create a document that's 791 by 1024 in size, 791 by 1024 in size, and it's all the same background image, and you call it image.tiff, you can replace it with your own image.tiff or your own separate images. You can have a different background page for each, different background image for each page. Now, that's the same as the other one, and I won't go and save it, I'll just close it because these are these are ebook templates, remember? So if you export that, you export it to a PDF. Well you could use other things, I suppose, but there you go. Okay. Just close that. No, don't save it. I don't want to save it. Now this one here, this is a newspaper cs4.idml. This is not one of those files from that other location. This is not one of those. This is from the other list that I showed you, Adobe templates, all free Adobe templates. And I found this in there somewhere. Tabloid, CS4, is it that one? No, it's just newspaper. Anyway, close them down, get rid of them. Same deal. You can see here that's got stock in design behind there, that image. And that's hiding in there. How do we find out what it is and where it is? Let's have a look in the resource manager. It's a linked file. And it's there. 
exactly the same size and it's been placed in well, nearly every page. One, two, three, four, five. And there's five. There's the black image there. What's in it? Well, you can see it there. So you can make your own background image or you can remove the background image altogether. You can replace it, you can embed it, you can collect them and you can locate it in the document. Let's locate that one there. Locate in document. There's those ones there and there they are there. So if you're having trouble changing them, just replace them. Of course, you don't want that in your newspaper. It's very handy, the resource manager, and it's your saviour when you're converting. Now, all of those are OK. Close. Now, the last one, let's, let's just close that file. I want to go to ebook templates number six. There's no fonts problems there. Let's find one that's got fonts in it. There's some fonts. Will this one give me any errors when I open it? Ebook template 5. I think I've got all those fonts. Because if there's fonts missing, as you know by now, this will come up and tell you the fonts are missing. Document, font manager. No, all fonts are there because Arial, very standard. Document, Resource Manager, one image, stock image, okay, and it's linked. So you can either link it or embed it. Locate in document, and there it is on the back page. Picture of what looks like a raccoon. And that's all there is to it. Personally, this is one of the problems I find with linked documents. If you move this document somewhere else, as I tried to do before and got lost, then you lose it altogether. You've got to go through all this mess. Let's close that document. Let's have a look at template 4. Document fonts are uh, Georgia and Arial. They're all standard fonts, so I'll have those. I was looking for one that had fonts. That I didn't have. No. Impact TTF. I've probably got that. Because that didn't give me an error message when I opened it up. Ebook template, IDML. Now it's not telling me missing fonts, so I've got that one. But that's how you convert IDML documents to AF pub documents. Piece of cake. Okay, I think I'll call it quits there because otherwise this documentary will get too long. There we go. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>